This is how I paint a chum salmon. White the whole fish up. Paint the whole fish white and then it gets a coat of white pearl. This is white pearl. It'll make that yellow really stand out. The yellow on top of the pearl has a really good looking effect. Couldn't do the whole fish that way, including the eyes off. I just use a cute little lacquer thinner. Or you could use an exacto knife. Or a combination of both. I'll go ahead and get that taken care of. I've got bright yellow. And I put about, it's basically all over the fish. Uh, bright yellow is transparent, which is good. The pearl will show through. Uh, hair on top. And I go ahead and do this whole fish with about a... You want it on there good enough, but good enough, but where the pearl still shows through. With the spawning and mode fish, they've got a faint stripe. Comes down about... Oh gosh, probably about maybe an inch, inch and a quarter. It's narrower at the top. It goes a little bit on even the cheek area a little bit. <clears throat> it's like a faint black stripe. It's not definite. But it's thinner up here. It comes back. And then it narrows at the tail. And I see it in a lot of my references. Uh, it, it's, can't deny it. There's like a faint black stripe that a lot of times is real noticeable. And there's black coming up from the anal fin. And the black tends to stop just before the anal fin. So there's black down here, and then there's like black flames. I guess is a good word for it. Black flame marks that go up. And they start at the anal tail, at the beginning of the, uh, the anal fin. And then they break up a little as you get towards the tail. And this area right here tends to be a lot wider. So there is white that kind of leaks through the, through the other paints that you can see, kind of a creamy color. And it's, it tapers out at the end of the anal where the white marks kind of take over, you know, over the top of the white. So I'm going to put a, like a little strip of white down here, or not really kill out all the yellow, but make it more of a creamy color. And then I'm going to come up here with it. And then it's going to, what it's going to do, it's going to merge into the bottom of the black stripe. So it's just a narrow little bit of white right there, but we're going to incorporate it in. And I, I made a little, little bit too strong with the yellow. I want to cream it up just a little bit. So the area I'm going to focus on and I could probably go ahead and go up to the ladder line, maybe a little bit above. But it's definitely more creamier down here, it seems like. And when you feel like you've got it creamy enough, feel free to stop there. And if all your yellow seems a little bit too loud, Feel free to go back over it with uh, a little bit of white and then some white pearl again. Okay, I'm missing my white all in this area, the midsection of the fish, and closer to the belly, towards the anal fin. Went ahead and creamed it up a little. I didn't want to kill the yellow completely out, but I got it to the point where it's really creamy looking. Then I went over it with uh, pearl again. 
Well, I used my reference pictures, and the particular one I wanted to use has it even wider in here. I mean, it, it shows up like really white. So I went ahead and went a little bit stronger with my white, and even a little bit around the cheek area. Okay, now we're going to put in the red flame-like markings. I'm going to do that before I even put the black on. Um, and it's good to practice as far as uh, like maybe on a piece of poster board just to get an idea of what you you know how everything goes and try to put it in in the right places the red ones tend to go right in this area and some of them go up and then there's more that come down and they connect use a good reference picture of Preferably just find one fish and use it so you don't jump around from one fish to the next. And they tend to come forwards about right in here. And this area right in here tends to be kind of dark with without much going on. Just, you know, like this area right here. So the red comes down to about right here and comes up, makes the flames. Then back here they turn black. And then there's some black ones coming up from the top and coming down. The back is gonna be dark, but we're gonna blend all that in later. But I'll show you what I mean. I've got bright orange and gill red mixed together and probably a little bit more orange than gill red. I think it's about like a 70-40 split or something like that. I've got one picture I'm using for reference for the flames. And uh, now they can be thick, they're not always super thin either and you might want to just kind of put it in first you know, before going back and darken everything in you may want to just get an outline and sometimes there's clear spots in between the flames even so you've got a lot to kind of think about I guess There is kind of a wavy pattern. And they do seem to sort of relate to each other. So you definitely want kind of a wavy. You want that wavy pattern. It's there. It's, I guess the marbleized look is what we're trying to go for. You kind of get an idea of a wave kind of Takes a little bit of practice, but there is kind of like a wave to it. Once you get that wave down, I think you're going to be all right. Once you kind of outline it, feel free to go ahead and darken it in a little bit so you get a better idea of what's going on. Yeah, there is kind of a little bit of a almost like flames, but you don't want to you don't want to make it look like a fire. It's more of a marbly look than than a flame look. I guess is the right word. More of a marbleized. Well, while I got this color, I'm going to go ahead and. Use it to put a little bit on the fin to see it. Depending on, uh, a lot of it has to do with the stage of the spawn that the fish is in. So keep that in mind. 
it goes over this yellow, it makes a nice orange. And it can be a little bit pretty darn showable too, so keep that in mind. There's almost like patches that come down. And we're going to darken the back, so remember that. So just keep on working, making it look as good as you can. And once you think you've got the marble effect uh, going on pretty good, then I'll show you what we do next. There's some black bars that come up. They come up from like the anal tail. And I'm going to go ahead and incorporate those in and show you what I got. Okay, here's what I got so far as far as my black. Now, I don't know if y'all have noticed, but there's like a, a lot of times, there's like a faint stripe that goes through here. It thins out on the end. But it's more noticeable along the red. It's thinner up, up here. It goes on the gill a little bit right in here even. But it's thinner up here. It gets thicker about right in here. And then it thins back up as you get towards the tail. But I see it a lot. So feel free to put it in. And it goes about an inch and a half. You want to do it faint at first. Get a general outline of where you want your stripe. And use your reference picture, it's on there, trust me. You can go as loud as you want with it. And try not to go down past those marks and miss it on just your red. Or you know, just on your on your markings. I think you get the idea of what I'm trying to do there. Basically, you want the stripe to show that it's there. Darken it back in. And that's about the intensity right there, no more. Okay, this color tends to come up from the belly. kind of mottled looking, I guess is the right word.
Don't put it on like jet black, but you know, mist it pretty good, get it good and dark. There's an area right here above the pectoral that tends to be kind of dark as well, about like that. Basically, we're darkening him up, in other words. And go ahead and do the very bottom of the belly that way as well. It's going to be a dark, spawning fish. In fact, the anal and these fins are going to be really dark as well. The lower jaw. You can even go up in the stripes a little bit to tone them down a little bit. You may want to concentrate your spray to, to get it accurate. Just ever so lightly. I know every fish is different, but I I thought I'd bring the in general I'd bring the red up their orangish red color up a little bit more. And but still you've got the white behind. You can see the white in between the like the I guess you could say flame marks or whatever, the streaks. That looks good to have that white in there because it, it's it's accurate. And now I've got my, my black again. Now these marks, they tend to be pretty well defined even up in here in the back. But the only thing is, like right here, they, they're almost really black. They get a lot of black on them. Now we're gonna darken the fish up I'm going to go ahead and darken the head. Let every fish, this is black again. But I know i got to go around the eye. I know the leading part of the maxillary gets it. Top of the head gets it, of course. Find you a good reference picture and use it accordingly. They get pretty dark. So basically we're toning in everything with black. The fins, whole nine yards. These gills down here, really black. Right in here, all really dark. Lower jaw is real dark. All this gets dark. All this down here gets dark, the gills. This nose tends to be really dark. Right along the head here. Tends to be really dark. So go ahead and use a good reference, of course. Go ahead and darken him up real good.
good reference picture and dress. I guess you call it dressing the head up, I guess you could call it. Okay, there's more bars coming down through here. And I'm gonna incorporate those in with black, at least right in here, just behind the head. And then the rest of them, even the red ones along the back, they have black. I think there's like some real narrow ones. You know, it all depends on your reference picture. And I'm going to go ahead and even the ones with a little bit of red in them. Go ahead and uh, dress him up a little bit too, make it make him look a little bit more realistic. They're just kind of dressing everything up a little bit. Now I'm also going to go across the back with black. Okay, now I'm going to take a couple of sweets down the back. Now I've got black. I'm just going to go along the back with it. I'm going to fade out before I get to the lateral line. I'm going to darken your fish along the head a little bit more. Bring out your, your fins as well with this black. bring out some of the scale detail. I mean, it's a dark fish anyway, so. And it helps blend everything together, so. From an extreme frontal, not so much from upward, but at least extreme, extreme frontal. My black is stronger than a lot of your other dark colors, like your brown and your black green. So be careful with it. And I'm going to readjust the fish and show you what we've got. And we're just going along the back. Give him a good uniform coat. Not even too dark on the back, really. But the back is definitely going to be the darkest. Probably fade out like maybe an inch, inch and a half or something like that before you get to the ladder line. That would be my guess would be a good spot to start. Stop. Go ahead and get your adipose pin. Get all that. Kind of gets dark with the back as well. Make sure your darkness goes up to the base of your fins. That's correct. Where the head connects to the body gets good and dark. So went ahead and darken the tail a little bit. Go ahead and darken the edges of the tail while you got it. And bring out the rays as good as you can. And we'll go ahead and uh, darken all our fins. Now I'm highlighting my fins, of course. I don't know if you can see that. I hope I'm not in the way.
I'm going to bring out all the pins that way. Uh, they pin this up during the spawn. They get pretty dark too. And the black even continues up onto the body usually right in here. But let your, your fish and whatever particular stage of the spawn it's in be your guide. He still got more black. Just gonna make a couple more passes with the black. Okay, uh, but you want to completely fade out by the ladder line and definitely darker on top. Still got my black and I'm just misting, darkening the upper half just slightly, just barely going over it. You might want to get down here a whole lot. Maybe just a pass or two. Mainly the top of the back. Top of the head. They bring this one up for you here. Just trying to bring some overall detail into the fish. But I'll show you what we do next. Still touching up a little bit, Just making sure the face is good and dark. Also, I want to refine my spray down. Maybe come up between some of these marks I maybe didn't get a chance to come up between. Just give them a little hint. Violet's a real good color to come up through here with. Uh, deep violet. Because it shows. Now I'm even... It just seems like the black markings back here stop kind of sporadically. I know every fish is different. But I'm going to go ahead and put another one coming up. We're just like real thin. But just to add a little bit of realism, a little bit more of the marbly effect. You know, make sure everyone has a unique look to it. It just adds a little bit more to it. I just kind of slowed down and spent the time to put in a couple more little details to add a little bit more realism. Now up through here, it's a little bit black. Which, or it's black like that though. Um, they're gonna go, uh, now we're gonna go to a gold toner and we're gonna go along everywhere we did that black shading with the, along the back. We're gonna go ahead and put some there. Pretty much the whole fish. And even the top of the head gets a little hint of that orange. Even the cheeks and everything. Just a hint. I mean, you have to get a, you have to take a double take to even see it. 
And these fins on like a full spawning fish, a lot of times you can't see nothing but pure black. And it's not wrong just to almost make them completely black. Now this adipose, it gets a trace of that orange too. I've seen it in some of my reference pictures. So I'm going to incorporate a little bit more of the. Okay, now I've got gold toner. I'm going to go along the back. And you go a little heavier on like where you see orange. Like on, on the adipose, I see it. The tail a little bit. Of course, the, the dorsal. You can see it on top of the head. It depends, I guess, every fish, I guess, can be a little bit different. Maybe just a hint of it right there on the cheek. I see a lot of fleshy color around the face. You can coat over the whole fish. Now violet's a real good color to off this red a little bit. If the black doesn't do it good enough for you, you can go back with violet and put it in there. And I do see violet. It's not wrong to put it in. Well, I've got like, well, it's not really violet. It's kind of like a red violet, I guess you could say. It's got the red in it, in other words. I guess it would be red violet. See hints of it along the back, so it's not wrong to put it in. You know, just everywhere you put the black, you don't, you, you don't even really hardly want to notice it, but maybe just a hint of it. Then you can go up with your, if you want to, you can go up between your red stripes to make a, make them look a little bit more purpley. It's totally up to you. Or you can leave well enough alone. It's Now let your reference be be your guide as far as on the mouth. And there again, it depends on your particular reference or your particular fish even. But a lot of times it seems like, like the very outer extremity of the mouth just like a layer of black. And do that on both sides and the tongue. Seems like the tongue gets black. And that, that the gum line where the tooth is, it's that very narrow strip where the teeth are. It tends to get black. Just a narrow strip of gum line. The very back inside the throat gets it. And even the top of the throat gets it a little bit. Pretty much where if the fish shut his mouth, his tongue would touch the roof of his mouth. That's about as far as you go with it. And just right in the middle. I kind of trimmed the very outer edge of the mouth. The tongue got black. Then the roof of the mouth, pretty much where the tongue would sit if the fish had his mouth shut, that got black and inside his throat got black. And then I went ahead and kind of trimmed the outer edge of the mouth with black too. But now this lower jaw gets real good and black. 
all his gills. Underneath the fish on the belly gets good and black. Back of his maxillary gets good and black. Well, not only the gum line gets good and black, but right here on the end, some of that darkness meets up with the, the black on the gum line. You'll still have hints of like maybe even yellow or flesh right in there. But the mouth is wide except for the tongue and the gum line. And the roof of the mouth where the tongue sits, that's black. Everything else is wide inside the mouth. There also does seem to be some fleshy areas that you can incorporate in. Also brought some black up around where we know we're going to whiten up. A lot of times there's a little bit of a depth change right in here where the grooves are, you know, the cheek. And so I'll, uh, you know, I'll incorporate some black there too. Well, like you can notice in this picture, the tongue is black. Uh, so much of the gum line is black. And it's not wrong to, you know, get all that stuff in there. But along the lower part of the jaw there, right there around where the teeth are, I see traces of yellow. And I've seen it on more than one picture. I've seen it on the very end. Uh, they do have a little bit of yellow on the end of their, their lower jaw there. Got white again. This time... I'm going to try doing it without using my brush. And I'm just going to rake my brush across the teeth. More towards the bottom of the tooth. And whiten them up that way. Sometimes you just got a lot more control with a regular brush than you do an airbrush. I'll go ahead and get that and I'll show you what we do next. I'm going ahead and using my brush. I'm going to go ahead and whiten everything in with my brush. And you can always dress it back up later with more black. You know, if you if you mess up with your white, you can shade it in with black even. You know, a little bit later. So I'm just kind of going along the bottom and pretty much anywhere there's a groove, that's where I'm meeting it up. Okay, I've got white. Same on the end. I've got a little bit of rich brown. And I just wanted to tone it right here in this area. You know, I'm going to leave these real bright areas right down here because they show. And that's it. You won't even barely even notice it's on there. Just enough to 
off this little uh, bit of a milky color right in here. And I even went over my dark stripe that I made earlier, put a little, just kind of tinted that a little bit with it. But as far as right in here, the very bottom, I'll leave that, I'll leave that alone. Let's see if I can't bring a little bit of realism to the mouth, to the, to the mouth area. Now's the time, a good time to look over your fish and see if you need to do anything else. Maybe darken the back a little more or, or whatever else you think you need to do. But now we clean the eye off and gloss the fish. Sometimes these outer edges show up a little bit <clears throat> on this side and that side. Um, I didn't put them in. Sometimes it's so dark you can't see them. But it's not wrong to go ahead and put in these outer, I guess, leading edges of the fins on both sides. Because they do sometimes show. Okay, now I've got polyurethane gloss. And we're just going to go ahead and gloss the fish. I went ahead and put a coat of base coat sealer over it first and let it dry. But I'll go ahead and finish putting this gloss top coat. Uh, it's a... Uh, Polyurethane gloss is what it is. Minwax polyurethane gloss. So I'm going to put this on and show you what we've got. This is how I paint a chum salmon. <laughs> 